Gary, it was two years to the day today that we were meeting you for the first time, and it feels like that's two years have flown by. Um, how would you assess your time here, or as a whole? Best two years of your life, that, Scott. And Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's been amazing. I've, I've really enjoyed every second, the highs, the lows. Uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, shall we say, but I think the club is moving in a really positive direction. Uh, we've obviously progressed in both seasons. We've been in League One. We've made a, a decent start this year. So, yeah, really delighted to be the manager of this football club. And, you know, it's a long list I've spent at any football club as the manager. And, and hopefully I've got many more years here. I'm going to put you on the spot here as well. But what would you say is that one main thing that you've learned in your two years at Exeter City? Well, that you need good people round about you to, to be successful. I think I've been fortunate that I've been allowed to bring some good people who I knew before into the football club, but I've also been fortunate that I've met good people at the football club. And the biggest thing in football you need in, in difficult moments is support. And I've had that from all my staff, all the players and, and all the people at the football club and the board above me and, and definitely from the supporters as well. You're a long way from home and you're a long way from Scotland as well. I mean, what is that one thing that gets you excited to come to work every day? Uh, two things, really. I think the the day-to-day -day work with staff, players, that it's not quite a changing room environment anymore as, as I had when I was a player, but just that training ground environment where you're allowed, you know, similar-minded people, people who are driven to win, uh, people who love football and, and all you talk about pretty much is football 24-7 and winning football matches. I think there is, for me, there's no better feeling. Uh, we capture that feeling after every game that we win. We have a picture of all the players, the staff, everyone that's at that game, whether it's home or away. Uh, and for me, that 10 minutes that you have where everything you've worked for, all the energy you've put in that week has, has came to fruition and you win a game of football, there's no better feeling than that. So those two things, kind of on a weekly basis and then daily basis, are what get me up in the morning. You need to come here as well with you know, an open mind and a, and a blank slate as well. I mean, what has the club met what you kind of expected from what you'd known about it from your research and everything? Or has it exceeded what you expected? Yeah, it's probably exceeded what I've expected, to be honest. The... You know, I obviously knew it was supporter owned. I'd never been to the stadium. Uh, so there was parts of the football club that I just didn't know about. I'd, I'd done all my research and I'd done as much as I could to find out about the club to help me get the job. But once you're here, you find out just what this football club means to the people in the city, uh, to people who were here, you know, 20 years ago, 20 odd years ago when the club was in real trouble and the journey that they've been on with this football club. And, you know, it's great to to meet those people, to spend time with those people and, and to be part of this football club now is, is for me really special. But like I said at the beginning, it's it's going in a really positive direction. I feel the football club has progressed even in the two years I've been here, not just in league placings in terms of, uh, you know, finishing higher up the table, but also, you know, within the training ground, within the stadium, the staff, uh, every single area of the football club feels that it's really moving forward at a really fast pace. Uh, to, to bring in even more success for, for our supporters. And that's that's a great thing for me. You said it yourself, you know, the longest spell you've had in management so far. Um, having spent two years here, did you see Exeter as your permanent home, you know, for the for the long term? Yeah, my family don't. They're still up north. Uh, my kids are still at school. Uh, Jen, our kids are still at school up there as well. So, uh, you know, they get down when they can. They go to loads of games up north. Obviously, it's far easier to go. They're, they're, they'll be there on Saturday again uh, at Huddersfield. Uh, so, so they're still based up there. And I, I come down here to work, go back home to, to spend time with family, which I, I quite like in a way that when I'm here, I'm fully committed to the football club 24-7. Everything I do uh, is for the football club. And then in the moments I do get, get allowed to go home and see the family and I can try and have some family time there. So, like I said, when I'm here, I, I have to put up with Mr. Perkins, obviously, on a, on a daily basis, living with him in, in the centre of town. Uh, but when we're here, we work, and, and everything we do is to, to try and bring, bring success to the football club. I was going to say what was the worst thing there, but you covered that living with Perks, <laughs> I imagine. Um, briefly reflecting on Tuesday night's result, what are you taking from that into the weekend? Yeah, I think we have to take the second half. I, I think we have to take the 
the performance that was as good as we played all season. Uh, we obviously won the, the second half 1-0, but we, we lost the game because we gave ourselves a mountain to climb in that first half. So we have to learn those lessons. We've uh, debriefed today with the players. They were fantastic in how they assessed the game and, and how they've moved on from the game. And that's what we want. We, we know there'll be difficult moments. We know there'll be setbacks this season in terms of results. Uh, and it's how you react to them. And we spoke about the last time we lost a game was Blackpool. Not many of the players could remember that, which was a good thing, I think, that is so long ago. But now our, fo our focus now is fully on going on another unbeaten run and hopefully even more games uh, than we did after Blackpool. Huddersfield were one of the teams that were relegated from the Championship last season. Um, they made a pretty decent start to life and went up to uh, fifth place uh, this week. So what are you expecting from them? Yeah, a tough match. I, I went to watch them. I was fortunate after the Shrewsbury game, they were playing at home at Bristol Rovers. So I went to see them live. Uh, they're an excellent team. They're very well coached. They have a clear identity of you know, how they're going to go about winning football matches and they're very good at it. So we need to be prepared for that. But as I always say, we have to be prepared to be ourselves and, and bring our best version of, of ourselves, bring our identity to the game and, and try and dominate the game. And if we do that, as every team we've played has found this season, I'm sure that we're a, we're a really difficult team to play against. So we have to recover, we have to take the, the defeat and, and use that as motivation. But I'm sure the players will be ready come kick-off to, to go and get another unbeaten run going. Huddersfield have conceded just one game. We got on goal in their last three league matches as well and kept Wrexham to a 0-0 draw on, in midweek, which is quite a rare feat as well. So it's just they're set up well and hard to break down. Yeah, they're, like I said, Michael Duff is, is somebody that played with my brother Stephen many many years ago at, at Burnley. He's always, uh, the teams that he's had, I played against his Barnsley team who, was, who were very well organised, set up uh, very similar to that team. They have some fantastic... Older pros uh, and the backline, Lees, Pearson. Uh, so they're, you know, I have the utmost respect for the club, for the team, for the manager, and and we know how difficult it's going to be. But like I said, I'm sure they'll be watching us right now and thinking how how tough a game they face, and it's important that we bring the very best of ourselves to to give them that. We had that obviously that great run of clean sheets, you know, not conceding in so many games, and it must have been strange for the players to for that to end. On Tuesday, but it's a case again of just you know you're trying to get back to that stage where we're keeping clean sheets because that helps massively. Yeah, look, I think any run is is going to come to an end at some point, and we we did speak about when it does how we react to that. And in fairness to the players, I thought they reacted quite well in the first half, and the second goal was a real blow because it had came at a time when I felt we had recovered and we would probably get through to half time to then reassess the situation and go into the second half, but. Even after that, the reaction second half, I, I said if you know if there is a way to lose a game, it's it's the way we lost on Tuesday with everyone giving everything up till the 94th minute, which was incredible. It wasn't 98, 99, but that's another story. But the players gave everything; they were on their knees, and and when you have supporters clapping you after a, a defeat, it shows the the level of appreciation that the supporters felt towards the players because of the effort they had gave and. We need that again on Saturday, but even more to, to go and get the result. How is your squad looking ahead of the match? Yeah, all good. The, the only negative is, is John Lee's had picked up a hamstring injury. That He's getting a scan at some point today. I, I don't know the full extent of the injury, but uh, he'll be out for the game on Saturday and possibly for, for a few weeks. So fingers crossed that's not as bad as it could be uh, because he's been fantastic for us since he came in. Uh, but he's the only one from, from midweek. We're still hopeful. Demi, Reese, Vinny, you know, are, are picking up their training, so they potentially could be involved, but if not, definitely involved on Tuesday, which would be great for the squad uh, and everyone else is, is fully fit. And Caleb's suspension over now as well? Caleb's suspension yeah. over. He picked up a little niggle in training uh, and he's he's been back fully training uh, this week as well. So uh, we'll assess him tomorrow, assess everyone, pick a squad and make the long journey up north to, to hopefully go and uh, get another unbeaten run started. Just finally as well, almost 500 tickets sold um, for yet another long, long trip as well. Um, we say it every week, but it's exceptional support, isn't it? Yeah, it's unbelievable. To You know, we, we are handle more than most. I go up and down that road, probably more than the supporters. Uh, so I know how far it is. Uh, 
but for them to do it, you know, every few weeks, the cost, uh, the cost to their life in terms of taking time away from probably family and different things they could be doing, their commitment to this football club is is unmatched, and uh, we really appreciate that. And, and as always, we we want to try and send them home happy, and it's something we're really proud of. Our away record since the turn of the year has has been exceptional, one of the best in. Uh, all four divisions, uh, so we have to try and keep that going. And and like I said, it's as to hopefully send them home happy and and make their their long travel worthwhile. All right, thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you.